Have you ever met the connector? Well, he ponders, he helps, he creates, he writes, he speaks. He basically connects people and brings them together. I speak about Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group. At psandallmarketinggroup.com, you will receive an assembled group of Paul's contacts and connections that cross into many sectors of life. Please contact Paul Solano at 617-240-4130 or psandallmarketinggroup at gmail.com if you are in the market for a wide array of services. Again, please contact The Connecta, Paul Solano at 617-240-4130 or psandallmarketinggroup at gmail.com with any questions. And now... Here's Paul Solano, the host of Paul Ponders. Welcome to Paul Ponders. My name is Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group, and I may be reached via email at paul at paulponders.com. Thank you for joining me for my foray into podcasting. It is great to be collaborating with my friend and associate, Chalonzo Amos of Pod Pro Entertainment to bring you some fun, exciting, and informative podcasts. For many years, I've been referred to as the Connector, or in greater Boston circles, as the Connector. With PSNLMarketingGroup.com, I've created a side gate to connect you and get things done. Please sit back and relax and listen to today's podcast. If you are driving or operating heavy machinery and just listening, and please just listen and stay focused on your task at hand. Thanks again for listening. Enjoy my ponderings. Let hashtag Paul Ponders begin. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to hashtag Paul Ponders, part of PS and All Marketing Group. Great to have you with us in this episode. Everything is going very well with the podcast so far. And I want to thank you for tuning in, logging in, stopping me in the streets stopping me in traffic and saying, nice job, Paul. You have a great face for radio or for podcasting. You have a very smooth voice. You sound like David Allen Boucher. All those good things you're saying. Well, we try to bring you all sorts of exciting topics and yeah, we're pondering as we do. We hashtag ponder. So hashtag ponder Paul, Paul ponders. What are we going to talk about this episode? Well, before I introduce our guest, I just want to thank Techie Chalonzo of Pod Pro Entertainment for just bringing you this wonderful, wonderful podcast as part of the Pod Pro Entertainment Network that has a few other really great podcasts. I invite you to go to that website, Pod Pro Entertainment, as well as paulponders.com. So, our guest for this episode is past president, past assistant governor of the Malden Rotary Club. David Hart, welcome. Hey, Paul, how are you? I am doing well. Thanks for being with us in this episode. My pleasure. Absolutely. Well, before we go into really the main topic, what we want to talk about with the Malden Road Race coming up, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about the Malden Rotary Club and what it's all about? Yeah, sure. Malden Rotary celebrated its... 100th anniversary two years ago. So I believe we're 102 years old when we were founded. We have been a very active club in the city of Malden, have worked and provided many, many different types of services to the city, have been a resource to organizations, charities, the high school, surrounding communities on various different levels. We have successfully completed several local grants in which we have applied and received money and have brought new things to Malden, services, activities, things like that. We've also done grants on the global level. One in particular that we did maybe about eight or nine years ago was a water project in Ghana, in which our club was able to put together roughly about $75,000 and brought clean water to a village in Ghana. We've also given out several scholarships over the years to Malden High School students. We have a, although it's not active right now, COVID actually affected it greatly during the during that time, but we do have what we call an interact club that works with the high school. 
and as I said, COVID did shut it down for a while, and we're looking at probably trying to get it restarted again. And, and that's with, as I said, high school students. It helps the high school students become leaders within their community. It actually is set up very similar to what a normal Rotary Club would look like with a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, things along those lines. And they look to do local service projects within the community. The members, although our membership is, is a little bit smaller than it has, it's over the years, it's been as high as 65 or 70 members. And for the most part, the membership was made up of many of the different types of leaders in the city of Malden. So that's kind of Malden Rotary in a nutshell. We're part of District 7930, which encompasses mainly the east coast of Massachusetts from roughly Boston all the way up into the North Shore. There's 47 or 48 clubs in District 7930, and, we're, and the district itself is about, I think we're close to 1,600 members scattered throughout district. So that's kind of Rotary and the district short version, shall we say. Well, that is a very great short version. I could not have said it any better myself, David. And in full disclosure for our listening audience, I am currently president of the Malden Rotary Club and proud to be the president for the second year in a row and maybe a third year coming up. We'll have to see about that. But anyways, I want to thank you for your dedication and your service to the Malden Rotary Club and to the Malden community. One thing is that it's about service above self. That's the motto and the key for what Rotary International and Rotary, the Malden Rotary Club is all about, if you want to touch upon that. Yeah, no, absolutely. The model, uh, the model as, as, as you say, Paul, the model is service above self. We work also on a four-way test. The motto service above self goes back to almost the beginning of Rotary. Rotary itself is 115 or so plus years old. Our area, which is one of our clubs, we have a club in Boston, which was actually the seventh, we call it Boston 7. And the Boston 7 Club was the seventh Rotary Club that was established in the country. The first Rotary Club was in Chicago. And it was established by a gentleman called Paul Harris. Paul Harris, as I said, was, was the founder of Rotary and the founder of the Rotary Club out of Chicago, and the purpose of Rotary at the time was is that members would work with other members on various services, whether it be banking, legal, real estate, manufacturing, whatever it might be. And Rotary, for many, many years, and still to this day, if I'm looking to get a, a vendor come in or a contractor to come in to do something at my house or something along those lines, I'm always looking first to see if there's a Rotarian in the area that has a business that would be uh, that would fit the need that I was looking for, as do many many members of our Rotary our Rotary district. I'm also the chair of our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee for the District 7930, and we have the district uh, the DEI committee has been in in place within our district at least. I think it goes back at least six to seven years. When COVID hit, things changed a little bit. Our focus has grown based on current happenings within DEI. The DEI committee also offers a lot of training opportunities for our members and for individuals that are outside of Rotary. We always open our trainings up to guests, friends, anybody the Ro a Rotary member may know that they want to forward out the link or the registration. We certainly make it available to anyone. And we've had some fantastic guests over the, over the last three or four years doing what we call a discussion series. And we will tackle topics within the diversity, equity, and inclusion arena. We'll generally bring in experts or we will study and go through a, a LinkedIn learning course or something along those lines and then open it up to, open it up to discussion with our members and whomever actually happens to be on the training at the time of the discussion. So those are some of the different things that we do. From a district standpoint, Malden Rotary is diversity, equity, inclusion certified, which is a certification that we developed, that our committee developed about three years ago. And we have a number of steps that a club needs to go through to certify themselves as DEI certified. And with that, they're given a certificate and uh, members 
of the club receive a district equity and inclusion pin. One of the favorite things with Rotary is pins. We give pins for clubs. Most clubs have a pin specific to their club. Different organizations, groups, fellowship groups, and things like that have certain types of pins. Every year, the Rotary president will develop a pin of their own, and those are given out every year to members, and they're also shared with friends of Rotary and things along those lines. That's great. That is super. That's a great synopsis of of what of what we stand for and what we're doing with the world of DEI. But in case you've been pondering what that four way test is, it's four basic questions. It's is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And that really ties in well with the DEI and what we're all about with the Malden Rotary Club and Rotary International. So David, I thank you for that great synopsis. So David, what is, in your your past experience with the Malden Rotary Club, what is one of the biggest fundraisers that the club has had? So one of the biggest fundraisers that we've had, and we've been doing it now, we'll say various forms because we had an event change over the last couple of years, but it's our road race. So the Malden Rotary Road Race. We started running a Malden Rotary Road Race. I think now it's it's got to be at least 15 or 16 years old. It has, as the years have gone by, it has changed. The course has changed. The, the type of race has changed. It was originally a 5K. Then it, it, it morphed into a 5 and a 10K. And then in 2019, we were approached by a race direction company, C5K Sports, asking if they could become part of our road race in which and what they wanted to do is they wanted to step it up a, a level from the 5K and the 10K to a half marathon in a five mile run. So after a lot of thought, working with the city, getting permitted for a race of that size and, and, and everything that goes into it, we decided that we would go with the half with the half marathon and the five mile race. What was interesting is that our race traditionally was held in and around St. Patrick's Day in March, depending upon where it fell. A couple of years we actually had it on St. Patrick's Day. But again, as I said, depending upon where St. Patrick's Day fell, but it was always either the weekend before or the weekend during or just or just after. And that was for all of the different types of races that we ran. On average, when we were doing the 5 and 10K, we had anywhere of probably 600 plus runners. The first year that we started the half marathon, we took our 600 runners and we brought it up to over 2,800 runners. So you can imagine, Paul, the logistics that went into a 5 or a 10K race up to a half marathon and a 5 mile, where we quadrupled, or more actually, more than quadrupled, our runners, which is why we partnered with C5K Sports and they came in and they basically set up all the logistics of the race. On our end of things, we as a club went out and we went after local businesses, banks, law firms, restaurants, physical therapy organizations, things along those lines for sponsorships. And so from our side of things, we went, as I said, we went after many, many different sponsors and many of our sponsors have been with us for years since the first day we started running, since we started running the race. And they partnered with us for the, for in 2019 for the half marathon and five mile. And we came off and we had an extremely successful race. As I said, logistically, everything increased tenfold or more. We had a much higher level of security. And ironically, the half marathon was about a year or two just after the Boston Marathon bombing. So every with that number of people, everybody was was really cognizant of, of having that, that number of people and groups of people together. So you can imagine the security was very tight. We had a tremendous number of volunteers. We had a, a really fantastic after party. And everybody really had a great time. The race was highly successful and our focus for our charity, and we try to focus every year on a charity, was an organization out of East Boston that works with veterans and it's called They Fought, We Ride. 
And they fought Reride, what is a organization run by a gentleman by the name of Andy Biggio out of East Boston is where they're located. And they work with veterans from all of our wars. And many people may know the they many people may know they fought We Ride from the mo- motorcycle run that they do in I believe it's the month of May if I'm not mistaken. I know it's May this year, and we are trying to coincide our race. We're actually about a week or two beforehand, and we're trying to coincide our race with their with their event because their event la- ends in Malden on Canal Street, so they get. Probably, Paul, what was it, maybe over a 1,000 motorcycle riders? Thereabouts. And I think it goes through, what is it, close to 10 or 15 communities. About that. And finishes, as I said, on Canal Street in Malden. There's an event, speakers, there's some awards given. And in 2019, the Malden Rotary Club was able to present a check to that organization for $10,000. So... Every one of the runners that was part of it knew that knew that by running in our race, not only were they going to be running in a in a highly professional race in a professionally run race, but they would also be supporting our veterans who have just done everything that they have so that we can continue to live the lifestyles and in the way that we live within our country. Malden Rotary and our members jumped on that. We realized that it was a you know a really great organization to be part of, and what better charity or what better service above self can we do than to honor and support the veterans that fought for us and fought for our freedoms for the United States. So this year, however, so so then after 2019, we all know what we all know what happened. COVID hit officially in March of 2020, so we had to cancel our March of 2020 race. Although we were ready to go, we had all the logistics done. We had a bunch of runners registered. I think it was probably in the same neighborhood of, you know, anywhere from about 2,500 to 3,000 runners. We had to cancel that race. What we were able to do, however, at the end of September of 2020, we were able to have a, an event at a local brewery called Idle Hands, and in which the runners could come and they could pick up their bib which most runners will save for as a memorabilia type of item, their medal, and also the race jacket that they got based on their registration. We also worked, we did, the, the running company also set up and did a virtual race that year also, which became obviously during COVID became very popular. Many runners were part of that. So although we didn't have the event, we still had sponsors, which was amazing. And our sponsors were on board with us and we honored, honored their sponsorships. We advertised them on our website. We advertised them on Facebook. And we also advertised them in the, on the, the September event when the runners did come and pick up their information and all of that. It was unfortunate that, you know, as, we, as, as you know, it was unfortunate that we were not able to run that race. In fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the Boston Marathon was canceled that year also. Yes, um, it was. Our race was kind of in an opportune time in March in that it was really, from what I understand, and again, I'm not a runner, but it was considered to be a taper run for people that were training for the marathon. So at that point in time, the marathon was scheduled in April, and our race was sort of that taper down run that they'd hit their peak of training, and then they start to back down from there. And so we had a, we had a very simple course that ran through the center of, of Malden and ended up finishing right in downtown Malden. And the local businesses were recipients of some great support of all the runners. And many of the local restaurants and bars were able to, you know, they had a, a fantastic Sunday in the 2019, or I'm sorry, a fantastic Saturday in 2019. 2020, as I said, we were not able to run, but in 2021, we also ran another race in that we were able to bring back, although we didn't receive the 2,800 runners, we had about, I think it was close to 1,500 runners. So it was not as big as we had expected, but it was still highly successful. And even though we had a little difficult weather on, on both day, on both times, because, you know, as we all know, living in New England, that time in March, you could have a 50-degree day or you could have a 
20 below zero day and we had something right there in the middle and one day it snowed and the other day it was probably one of the coldest days of winter. But this year in 2023, we are going back to what we know, which is the 5K and the 10K race. We are launching our registration, if not this week, by the end, uh, by the, uh, if not by the end of this week, certainly by the beginning of next week, we have partnered with a new timing company called Granite State Timing. And you will also, runners will be able to find our registration, electronic race registration on a platform called Race Roster. So we, we are going, as I said, we're going back to our 5 and 10K that we had run prior to the half marathon at least 13, 14, 15 years or so, give or take. The course, although it's not officially certified, was certified up through 2020. We're going to go back to our old course, which takes us down Main Street in Malden, Round Pine Banks, up into the Forestdale section, and then both starts and finishes on Ferryway Street, which is right near Sacred Hearts Parish. So we're really looking forward to that event. We're looking forward to the support of our sponsors, and this year also, we will be supporting They Fought, We Ride, and we will be supporting them at Veterans Organization again this year. So that's kind of our race in a nutshell. We're really looking forward to doing it. And so far, we've put some information out via Facebook and have received nothing but strong support from our Facebook followers that are following our road race, whether it be the half marathon or the 5 and 10K. That's fabulous. I've been seeing a lot of really, really positive comments on the Facebook page, and people are just so happy that we're doing something on May 7th. It's going to be great just waking up early in the morning, getting out onto the course, setting it up. It's going to be a fun experience working with the fellow members of the Rotary Club and any volunteers in the community. We have the buy-in, from what I understand from a past meeting, of the Malden Run Club, the Run Club of Malden. And they actually are going to be, be providing us with some volunteers, from what I remember, and also runners, which is always a great thing. Now, what time are the races? So the races, we're finalizing all the logistics, but the races, as, as you said, Paul, the race is on May 7th, which is a Sunday morning. I, I hope I have this right, but as I said, the, the registration is going out and we will, we will be posting it out. But the 10K starts at 10 o'clock and the 5K starts at 10.30. We plan on the race being done probably around 11.30 to noontime. We'll have a small event afterwards. In some regards, Paul, we're starting again. But we're starting again on something that we know, on a course that we know, a course that's been vetted, and a course that over the previous years that we've used this course has received really good reviews from the runners. The runners like it because it's not just a straight flat course. It does go up and in through the neighborhoods up in Forestdale. So there is some hills both up and down. It's, it's actually a very, from what I understand in some of the reviews that I've, I've read, it's actually a very pleasant run. That's awesome. So that's May 7th in Malden. What's the name of the race again, David? Malden Rotary Road Race. All righty. That's really great. And I will say from volunteering at the, at the registration table and even after the race at the award ceremony, the camaraderie is just tremendous. It's so nice seeing familiar faces, runners who have been with us for many years. And as you said, we probably go back about 16 years, 15, 16 years of having this running race. It's really a great experience. And again, it is really the largest fundraiser that the Malden Rotary Club has. Is that correct? Absolutely. And it has, and, that, and the Malden Rotary Road Race over the years has really allowed our club to do a lot of work within the community, provide scholarship money to Malden High School seniors or seniors that live in the Malden area. As, as you know, we have both Malden Catholic High School and Malden High School in, in Malden, and we do scholarship applications from both schools. They've applied over the years. We have awarded somewhere in the neighborhood of about $50,000 worth of scholarships. And if I did my math correctly, over the years of Malden Rotary, we have generated and fundraised close to $200,000 and have put it back into the community in Malden. And again, this is over the years, over various projects 
various service projects throughout throughout the community of Malden, supporting several different organizations that are part of the community or serve the community. And the nice part that we like about our partner this year, they fought we ride, is is that they serve veterans both in and around the Malden community on a regular basis. One of the best stories I heard was there was an older gentleman that was still alive from World War II, had fought in Italy, and he was at that point in time, and this goes back at least two or three or four years when we presented our first check, the story was that this gentleman was honored at the age that he was, which was late 80s, early 90s, still had some PSTD from World War II. And one of the therapies was to help him return back to where he fought in Italy, becoming a more and more popular therapy method. And part of our money that, that we donated to the organization helped fund the trip for that gentleman to go back. Even at that age, he was still suffering from his experiences during World War II. It's just a powerful organization, and I, as a Malden Rotary member, and, as, and just as in general, I'm so proud to be part of that organization and be able to support with what we do, be able to support that organization. And I'm also, as a Rotarian, I'm very proud that we can support our community and support our young people and help them with scholarships. And also, as, I, as, as we've talked, Paul, also support many of the local organizations and nonprofits in Malden on a number of different levels. And that's what it's all about. As the song goes, that's what it's all about, Alfie. And it's really great being president of the Malden Rotary Club, but it's great being a fellow, a friend and a fellow colleague of yours, David. And I thank you for your great work as a Rotarian. It's all about service above self. But I want to applaud you for all the great things that you have done for the Malden Rotary Club, your past recognition as one of our heroes. So I thank you for being one of our, our heroes and also a Paul Harris Fellow, which is the highest award uh, bestowed upon any Rotarian. And you have won that a few times at least. And I want to thank you for your, your great service to the Malden Rotary Club and Rotary International. Thank you, Paul. Absolutely. So just to wind down, how do we reach out to the Malden Rotary Club? How do we find out about Rotary Club becoming a member or even logging in and registering for that road race once that link is active? So if you're interested in Malden Rotary, you can certainly go to our webpage, all of our information about our club, recent happenings, events that we may have been part of. You can go to maldenrotary.org. Also, if you'd like to go to our road race website, MaldenRotaryRoadRace.com. We will have our registration information on both of the sites. And you'll also see some of the different charities that we've done. The Malden Rotary Club several years ago created a 501c3 or a charity, and it's called Rotary Club of Malden Charity Inc., which if you want to make a donation, it's certainly a tax deductible donation. Those are the two areas of go. And then also look for us on Facebook. We have found, especially with the road race, is that there is a tremendous number of follower, followers on Facebook. And we and again, that is the Malden Rotary Road Race Facebook page. You'll be able to see that. And all of the registration information will be there. We're just finalizing the logistics with our registration company and with our timing company right now. That is fabulous. So again, David, thank you for being here. And I hope that you have a very sunny day on May 7th. <laughs> One could only hope, but if you don't like the weather. It's got to be better than 10 below zero, Paul. <laughs> this is true. And even uh, being on the course and having the snow falling on all the runners. Uh, That's right. That, That's that right. was really quite, quite an experience. It really was. Well, more experiences will continue. We look forward to May 7th and hearing more from the Malden Rotary Club. Maybe we'll have, have you or maybe even Andrew Biggio from They Fought We Ride on to plug their motorcycle ride coming up. During conversations with Andy, discussion was They Fought We Ride, and we're going to be They Fought We Run. They Fought We Run is our tagline. Absolutely, indeed, without a doubt. So with that being said, David, thank you, and I want to thank our listeners for tuning in. Another edition, another episode of Hashtag Paul Ponders. 
And you can find me at paulponders.com or psandallmarketinggroup.com. So until we meet again, everyone, thanks for tuning in, subscribing. Techie Terlonzo in the studio, thank you for providing another great episode of the Pod Pro Entertainment. Until we meet again, everyone, hashtag indeed. I trust that you have enjoyed Hashtag Paul Ponders. Again, my name is Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group, and I may be reached via email at paul at paulponders.com to do some more pondering. Many thanks to my longtime collaborative friend and associate, Chalonzo Amos of Pod Pro Entertainment, in bringing you our fun, exciting, and informative podcasts. You rock, Techie Chalonzo. With PSNAllMarketingGroup.com, I created a side gig to connect you and get things done. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me at Paul at PaulPonders.com with any questions. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Paul Ponders. Follow us on Twitter at Paul Ponders Pod. Follow us on Instagram at Paul Ponders Podcast. Thank you again for listening. The hashtag Paul Ponders, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, our website paulponders.com, or wherever you stream your podcasts. Produced by Pod Pro Entertainment, hashtag Paul Ponders lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com, hashtag the new radio. Until we meet again, my friend, stay well. Hashtag Indeed.